let's have a look at organization maturity models. And not performance models, maturity models. Performance models is the next uh, talk. Now with organization maturity models, uh, we're talking about the, the maturing of the organization, um, the development of an organization, which tends to follow a fairly uniform pattern in any particular um, context. Most organizations will go through very similar stages and um, uh, it's quite repeatable, quite observable. Now, modeling organizations for their maturity was, was quite popular in the 1970s. Um, however, uh, it goes back well before that. I did trace back um, the observations, uh, went back to about 1934 or something like that. Um, but nevertheless, there was a lot of attention paid to it uh, in the 1970s. Now, the maturity model itself um, is based on the frequent observation that organizations go through stages as they mature. Now, these are not, uh, is not a continuum. It's, there are definite and observable stages. Now, they seem to be stable in those stages for quite a time, and then they do something and it moves to another stable stage. Each stage is stable. Each stage is characterized by dominant problems. That is, there are some problems that until they solve those problems, they're not going to get out of that stage of development. It doesn't mean there aren't any other problems, it just means that there are problems that dominate that stage. Now, overcoming the dominant problems in one stage simply exposes the dominant problems in the next stage. All right? Progress through these is invariably one way. Organizations invariably go um, one way. They don't, they don't regress, they don't come back again once they've sorted out uh, how to fix one, one stage problems. Maturity models do help to direct attention to how to improve because they do direct attention to the dominant models that you're going to have to deal with. Organizations can deal with other problems, but dealing with those other problems essentially wastes a lot of time and resources because fixing them won't allow the organization to get out of the stage they're in. They simply spend some money. So the whole idea is that you try to find out what the dominant problems are and address those, and then you get, uh, you'll make some progress. Now the software maturity model, this was, um, uh, I guess you could say it was articulated. I uh, couldn't say it was developed, um, but articulated by Watts Humphrey, or specifically the team that Watts Humphrey headed when they responded to a, a request for tender by the United States Air Force. Uh, who was sick and tired of spending a lot of money on developing software for organizations that um, weren't able to deliver. And they wanted to know, was there some way of determining uh, which organizations they should trust their work to? So they wanted some pre-qualification of organizations before they gave them uh, work and the money for it. It happened that Watts Humphrey had been working for IBM, where he had been um, uh, supervising, among other people, Ron Radis, or Radich, um, who had been working on quality management and had uh, added to the work of uh, Philip Crosby and, and um, came up with this model of a maturing organization where it came to software development um, quality. They, um, they not Ron Rodis, but uh, Watts Humphrey and the team uh, who were by that time the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon University, headed by um, uh, Mark Polk, did publish this uh, software CNM. Uh, initially, it was actually a, a question, survey questionnaire uh, that simply found out where, where you were on the scale, but the, it was wrapped up and published as um, something more than a survey. And this was done, uh, the first one was published in 1993. Now it set out organization software development maturity in five levels. And the first level was performed, then was managed, then defined. Now what's Humphrey, when you, when, when you talk, I was gonna say when you talk, he's, unfortunately he's not, he's not alive anymore. But uh, while he was there, he did say, well, the first three levels are evident, he, he couldn't, um, he couldn't prove the last two, which were um, measured and optimizing, 
but they seem to make a lot of sense and they were worth doing and it's been adopted and taken up quite widely since that time. As I say, these maturity models do give focus to the improvement efforts. Maturity models do identify the dominant problems at each level. They provide a focus for productive improvements and importantly, improvements outside of the current level are unlikely to be productive or lasting. Now, that's because they address a problem that the organization is not capable of dealing with at the moment. So the summary then for maturity models is that they describe the stages in an organization's development. Each stage is characterized by dominant problems. Overcoming the dominant problems at one level exposes the dominant problems at the next level. Maturity models do provide a structure for improvements and they're quite important for that reason.